Simulating engine failures is one of the most important training exercises for any pilot flying a single engine aircraft. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Dan Richworth and I'm the author of the book Papa Kilo, a true story from a Suzy Air pilot in Indonesia. I'm also a former pilot, instructor and manager from Suzy Air. I'm currently a Boeing 737 captain and I very much enjoy making tutorials for other pilots. Now, engine failures in any aircraft can be put into one of two categories. The first category is a temporary loss of power. In other words, the engine can be restarted. The second category is severe damage. In other words, the engine cannot be restarted. In this video, myself and my colleague are going to demonstrate some of these different types of engine failures at various stages of flight. For this exercise, we're going to be using the simulator of a Cessna Grand Caravan. For the Cessna Grand Caravan, the three most common types of loss of power include fuel control unit or FCU failures, flame outs, and compressor stalls. Now let's take a look at the engine indications for each of these scenarios and see if you can guess what just happened. So in this scenario, we can see that the NG, that is the speed of the turbine shaft, stabilizes at around 54%. The engine is still running, however, it's running at idle power. This is clearly an FCU failure. Now we can resolve this by simply moving the power lever back to idle and by very carefully using the emergency power lever or EPL. So in this scenario, we can see that the NG has gradually decreased down to a number close to zero. This clearly indicates a flame out. If we were quick enough and the NG was still above 50%, we could have simply switched the ignition on and moved the power lever back to idle. This could have then relit the fuel in the combustion chamber. However, we only have about three seconds to do this. Once the NG does drop below 50%, it's too late for that. A full shutdown is required, followed by an air restart. We need to do this in order to prevent the combustion chamber from becoming flooded with fuel. In this last scenario, we have a compressor stall. This can be recognized by erratic engine indications and also a revving sound from the engine. A compressor stall can be resolved in the same way that a flame out can. As long as the engine is still above 50%, you can simply switch the ignition on and move the power lever to idle. Now let's see some practical examples of these scenarios in the cruise. So in this scenario, I managed to switch the ignition on in time whilst moving the power lever back to idle. Notice that as I'm moving the power lever back to idle, I'm also moving the prop lever to minimum. This is important to reduce drag. However, I'm only bringing the prop lever back to the stop. I'm not going to feather the prop unless a full shutdown is required. The difference in drag between a prop minimum and a prop feathered is insignificant. However, it takes about 15 seconds or so to unfeather the prop compared to just a few seconds from prop minimum. Okay, you have to drop. Control. Most from power lever. Energy below 50%. We're going to shut down. And 
timer started. Start to energize the ignition on, proper rotating, voltage shed, fuel plates and pressure one. So in this scenario, I didn't switch the ignition on in time. Given that we typically have around 3 seconds to do this, this is the most likely scenario that we might encounter. As a result, I now need to idle, feather and cut off the engine. A full restart is now required. Note that in both of these scenarios, I immediately handed over control of the aircraft to my colleague. If you have a co-pilot, use them. The more things that you try to do yourself, the more likely you are to make a mistake. That's bad CRM. Engine severe damage, also known as a catastrophic engine failure, is actually quite easy to identify. The best way of explaining this is by throwing a brick into a washing machine. Now that washing machine was spinning at maybe a few thousand RPM. The PT6 engine in the Cessna Grand Caravan spins at over 37,000 RPM. If one of those turbine blades comes loose, then trust me, you're gonna know about it. Due to the violent shaking that can be experienced during a catastrophic engine failure, the engines from most airliners are designed to shear off in these scenarios, quite literally dropping the engine from the wing and on top of any unlucky person who happens to be on the ground. However, in the Cessna Grand Caravan, there's no such shearing pins. The PT6 engine is firmly attached to the airframe, and if you don't shut down the engine immediately, it could quite literally shake your aircraft apart. Whenever encountering engine severe damage, regardless of the stage of flight, immediately idle, feather, and cut off. Now of course there's going to be a massive difference between having an engine failure in the cruise compared to having an engine failure when you're close to the ground. The key difference here is time. When you have an engine failure after takeoff, you simply haven't got time to identify the exact problem. The only thing that you still do need to identify of course is whether you have a temporary power loss or if you have an engine severe damage. However in either case, your first action is always going to be to pitch down because if you don't, you're probably going to stall the aircraft. Now let's take a look at an engine failure after takeoff. See if you can work out what's wrong with the engine. Okay, pushing now. And in front of that stop, you have control. Control, this is the EPL. Power's back. Yeah, pitch up. So did he manage to work out what was wrong with the engine? From where I was sitting, I knew that it was a loss of power as opposed to a very obvious engine severe damage. Maybe it was an FCU failure, maybe it was a flame out, maybe it was a compressor stall. Who knows? I simply didn't have any time to find out the exact cause of the loss of power. But when you're flying that close to the ground, this specific diagnosis simply doesn't matter. Providing you've switched the ignition on prior to the takeoff, in any event that you do lose power, you can recover with these four simple steps. So firstly, immediately lower the nose, move the power lever and prop lever back to the stop. You can do this with one movement of your hand. Immediately unstow the emergency power lever and move it about halfway forward. Adjust the prop lever as needed. As long as you already have the ignition on, these four steps will work for FCU failures, flame outs and compressor stalls. So to summarize, if you see or hear anything wrong with your engine, immediately switch on the ignition. Also always make sure that you fly with the ignition on for takeoff, landing and when flying close to the ground. If you're flying with a co-pilot, consider giving them controls whilst you troubleshoot. This also applies to most other emergencies when time permits. 
Don't feather the prop unless you need to perform a full engine shutdown. Remember it takes about 15 seconds to unfeather and the difference in drag compared to the prop lever in minimum is insignificant. And finally, if you do have an engine failure in the climb, always make sure that you lower the nose. Otherwise a quiet engine is going to be the very least of your worries. I hope this tutorial on the Cessna Grand Caravan has been useful for you. If you would like me to make more tutorials like this, please do let me know in the comments section. Also please do like and subscribe. And finally, if you would like to know more about what it's like flying for Susia, please do consider buying my book, Papa Kilo, a true story from a Susia pilot in Indonesia. Part one is already out on Amazon. I'm currently working on part two as we speak. Until next time, thanks for watching.